Do you ever get toxic comments from people who you know or complete strangers? And do those comments sting you or you just don't give a damn? Well, last week I got my first hater here on YouTube and surprisingly I got very excited like in a positive way and I wanted to delve deeper on this idea of caring or not caring about what other people think or say about you. Hey my friends! If you're new here, I'm Anna and this is my Siberia Inside channel, which is about everything that is mindful and creative. So today I want to talk about attitudes, perception, social anxiety and what minimalism has to do with all of it. First of all, for this video, I want to thank my first YouTube hater or troll. So I blocked them immediately because I've learned my lesson many years ago. It's when somebody wants to hurt or offend you, they absolutely will as soon as you lose your temper. For me, the best weapon or defense uh, against rudeness is indifference or kindness. So, and I remember one story that my, one of my Moscow friends told me. She was at the supermarket buying groceries and the cashier was very disrespectful. Instead of resorting to rudeness in response, my friend smiled softly and said, I'm sorry, you must be so tired after this long day of dealing with all of us customers. And the cashier smiled back and thanked my friend who managed to find a little bit of empathy. I don't often have the mental strength to do that or, as my partner says, to kill with kindness. For me, the best way out is to turn away, go away and never bother. Just like with material minimalism, you let in, into your life only those things that are useful and loved. With mental minimalism, you let inside your heart only those opinions and attitudes that matter to you, that are valuable to you. And uh, it doesn't mean that you should deny those opinions their right to exist. No, it's, it's just about letting them affect you emotionally. If you are like me, a highly sensitive person, you must have suffered a lot of situations in your life when you were insulted, even though the person didn't mean to insult you. And at some point of my life, I realized if I continue to care too much about what other people think or say about me, my heart wouldn't make it. I would be a, an emotional wreck all the time. I still haven't figured out a way how not to be affected by um, toxic opinions and attitudes of other people, but at the same time not to be too indifferent and disinterested. There is a thin line here and I don't want my heart to turn into a stone and I don't want to cancel rude people just because of their rudeness. Because those comments and opinions are not based on strength, it's weakness, it's trauma, whatever you name it. A mentally strong and empathetic person never wants to bring pain to others. Those who suffer from any form of emotional deficiency or trauma love to hurt. And it's so important to remember it each time you come across any form of disrespect. So here is another story from real life. Uh, my parents had a friend who was a chief editor of one of the most prominent, famous independent newspapers here in our region in Siberia. And once he published an article with a picture of a high-ranking local official. But the picture was made in profile sideways like this while that official, state official, had imposed kind of a rule that all his pictures should be taken like full face, like this. And don't ask me why. Uh, so probably that old regime 
supreme power official had deep insecurities and my parents' friend absolutely unknowingly played on them. As a result, that very famous and popular newspaper was ruined, it was closed, and shortly after my parents' friend got cancer and passed away, and the official was eventually removed from his position, but much, much later. Putting things in perspective, it seems so utterly meaningless to be so insecure about yourself and what other people think about you, that you are eager to destroy someone for that. What do you think? Of course, I'm a human. I'm not perfect and I'm quite aware of that. And I've been through many, many embarrassing situations. And each time I failed and I had that very deep and intense desire to disappear forever and not to be seen by people who have witnessed my shame, I would ask myself, so you failed, and so what? Do you want your whole life be ruined because of that? If yes, then you don't own yourself, but other people own you. And there is another unpleasant facet of this issue, which is cultural. Well, at least in this country where I was born and I currently live in. In Russia, there is an unspoken rule not to let your problems be visible by other people. Well, at least in my family, it was like that. I remember my grandmother, who lived in the countryside for her entire life, was always terrified of what neighbors might think or say of our situation. And we had a tough situation, like many other families in Russia, a problem related to alcohol addiction. And it's a, it's a very sensitive topic, but I'm feeling fine sharing it, because it seems like the only way to break the pattern of silencing the problem. Years after my grandmother passed away, it was again that silencing and the reluctancy to discuss the problem that resulted in us losing our mother to depression and substance abuse. Everybody preferred to turn a blind eye because it was for a long time, because it was a very um, shameful and uncomfortable topic to discuss and to reveal to other people. And when our eyes and hearts were finally wide open and screaming, it was too late. And this is how too much caring about opinions of other people can lead to a real tragedy. I'm trying not to be afraid of being seen as I am. After all, there's no use hiding anything, refusing to accept any of my characteristics as a human. But I have a right to keep some things just to myself. It's privacy that is commonly respected by other humans. And if someone tries to break through my privacy borders without my permission, I block them immediately, be it in real life or on the internet, it doesn't matter, because life is too short to let any intruders in. But of course, in, in some situations, it takes a little bit of empathy to see a real suffering person behind that hater's mask. So I'm constantly trying to get better with that. So, and what about you? Uh, do other people, other people's remarks and opinions hurt you? Or what is your attitude to that? So, I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. And thank you everyone who has recently subscribed and commented on my channel. I read and respond to all of your comments. Well, but obviously no, not that one, not the toxic one. And it makes me so happy to know that we can connect in such a beautiful way. So sending love from Siberian. Be well, have a lovely day and see you in the next video. Пока-пока.